Hey everyone, I'm Dan. And I'm Katie. And we're going to talk to you about the next airplane we're going to get. So unfortunately we had to sell the 172. We really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. But it was more of a toy than an actual tool. You couldn't really go far with it. It didn't have any icing capabilities. It didn't have an autopilot, which is really helpful for long distance legs. And it really didn't have the payload we needed with the family getting bigger and bigger. It was really fun while we had it. We took a few friends up and around Austin. It was a little bit more of like the touristy airplane. So we could just fly around, show them downtown, go back home. Uh, we tried to do a couple trips with it, but like Dan said, without that autopilot, we didn't really want to fly very far. And when you're in Texas, it takes a very long time to get out of Texas. Yeah. So there wasn't a whole lot of like extended travel that we could do. And also all of our family's a little too far away to get to with a 172. Yeah, they're all at least a thousand nautical miles away, and that's a long time <laughs> at 105 knots. Yeah, that's way too slow. So we're going to get something a little bigger and a little faster. I wanted to talk to you all about what we're thinking and why. So we want to talk about the three airplanes we're considering right now and then go over a little bit of what it would cost to operate them and then why we're thinking about them payload and range-wise. The first airplane we're considering, which has been on my bucket list for years of wanting to own one of these, except now our family's getting a little bit too big for it, is a Mooney Ovation 2. They can be bought right now for about $250,000. They cruise at about 190 knots on about 16 gallons per hour, and they have an incredible range of well over 1,800 nautical miles when you fly them in the long range mode. The only problem is their cabin's starting to get a little bit small for how big we need. Uh, with the baby and the dog and all these different like, types of things we're dragging around, like car seats and things like that. So we're, we thought about the Mooney for a while, but we kind of eliminated it now, and we're starting to think about two other airplanes. So the next airplane we're thinking about, and we're still not sure when and where we're going to buy one, but is a Beechcraft Bonanza. They're just the eponymous, just fantastic, great long legs, uh, really high speed, 170, 180 knots on 16, 17 gallons per hour. Same engine as the Mooney, but it's a six seater, and so it has a little bit more room for bags and things as well too. Uh, one of the interesting aspects is just the back of a Bonanza is club seating. So if you have two pilots right here looking this way, then you have uh, two more sets of two, and they can all talk to each other. So my daughter can be sitting on one side, my wife can be sitting on the other, and they can be doing their own thing kind of away from each other without having to interact as much, or they can play together on the floor. So it worked out pretty well. The Bonanza, again, is about a quarter million dollars to buy. Similar fuel flows, uh, a little bit more maintenance, just Beechcrafts are usually just a touch more expensive when it comes to maintenance, but you're also getting an extremely high quality product that's gonna just absolutely last forever. Now the third airplane is one that I've been really intrigued with in the last probably year or so. I've been doing a lot of research and, and read a lot of articles on it, and I think this is one I'm, t I'm leaning towards, but I'm still, we're not 100% sure which one we're gonna buy, and this is really the one I think is the number one in our mind right now. Uh, but the Cessna P210N, with a engine swap to an IO550. So the original P210 had a really great uh IO540, I believe, engine, and it was a great strong engine, except it starts to lose a little bit of steam once it gets above about 15,000 feet. So a company went and got the same engine that's in the Bonanza and the Mooney, and they turbocharged it and put it into the P210, and you still have pressurization, you have pneumatic boots for de-icing, you have a hot prop so that way you don't get ice on your propeller, and it's pressurized up to 23,000 feet. And the nice part about this particular one is A, you're above a majority of the weather, not anywhere near all of it. With a P210, you can do 210 knots at 17 gallons per hour, and you can go 1,500 nautical miles nonstop because the original P210 held a lot of fuel. Then there were three additional aux tanks in it. They're called flint tip tanks, and there's one other tank in the tail uh, that holds an additional, I think, 27 gallons. So you hold 147 gallons of fuel, so you can go really, really far. And that was one of our goals, to be able to go nonstop and not have to go and refuel at every other airport because we like to be able to just get up high, put the autopilot on and just let the airplane take us there. So that's one of the, the main reasons we're looking towards the P210. When it comes to cost for these types of airplanes, they're getting significantly more expensive than the 172. If you remember my, one of my earlier videos, it costs about $7,500 a year for the 172 to fly 100 hours. With an airplane like this being using it every weekend or every other weekend, we'll probably fly it about 200 hours a year. And generally speaking, the rule of thumb I use for these larger aircraft is about $100 an hour for fuel, oil, engine, and prop, because I fly Lena Peak and I, I like to get the fuel flows down and just 
not try and rush to get there. Um, some people are going to say it's 180, some people are going to say it's 90. Um, the one I'm going to use for this particular exercise is $100 an hour for simplicity. These airplanes, generally speaking, are between $250 and $350,000. If we assume $300,000 for simplicity, that means that the uh, average yearly payment for the uh, paying off the airplane is about $20,000. Uh, we can assume $4,000 a year for maintenance, $4,000 a year for hangar, and then an additional $2,000 for miscellaneous expenses here and there, like uh, subscriptions to charts and things like that. Then we're at about $30,000 just for the fixed costs. Add an additional 200 hours at $100 an hour, and you're at, uh, uh, excuse me, then you're at $20,000 for that. So it's about $50,000 a year to fly the airplane 200 hours, or about $250 an hour to operate it. So just remember that the Cessna 172 was uh, $75 per hour. This is 250 so the costs are going up substantially, but the speeds are doubled and the amount of space uh, that you have to bring objects and things has gone up significantly as well too. So those are our three options for what airplane we're considering to get next. Um, the things I like about it is uh, all three of those airplanes have de-icing, which is really important. When we travel to see our family, they're in places that are much colder than Austin, Texas. So uh, having that uh, reassurance that we can have de-icing to get out of a uh, cold place when we're traveling in winter is really nice. Uh, it's also nice being able to go higher. So uh, the, the two that we're really heavily considering go much higher. And the pressurized one is really nice because if we can go higher, there's less turbulence. I actually get pretty motion sick from these smaller aircraft. And that was one of the reasons why we also got rid of the 172, because I couldn't travel in it very much, uh, especially with how turbulent the hot air here is in Texas. So having the ability to go up higher will be a lot nicer. And I just, I like the idea of having a little more space. So we can use it for weekend getaway trips. Uh, we can take all of our baby gear, uh, and we can also take our dog if we need to. So it's really helpful to understand what our mission is and what our goal is with our airplane as a family so that we can make sure that we get the right airplane and that way we will actually use it. And the whole point of having an airplane is that you fly it. So thanks for watching. Um, when we get closer to actually going forward and buying it, we'll start doing more view, uh, videos on how we locate it. Um, how we get the loan for it, all these types of things to put it all together, and including any training I have to do to appease any uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, insurance aspects. So thanks for watching.